back to EC3 really cooks it. Shellfish day and the shellfish that I'm about to demonstrate are oysters. Um, talked a little bit about this at the beginning of the show. Um, these are eastern oysters which are found along the Atlantic coast and then also in the Gulf of Mexico which is where these came from. Um, oysters actually when you get them fresh you can keep them in a refrigerator for about five or six days uh, before they go bad. They don't go bad as quickly as some people think. Um, and some people don't like them because of the texture. I get that. I do like them despite the texture, uh, but there's a lot of different things we can do for them. So what I'm gonna show right now is just how to shuck an oyster. So on the oyster, there's a flat side and what I'll call the bottom side. So flat would always go on the top part. And you'll see it by this, the, the way that this shell is, it's almost flat all the way across and the bottom part has a dip in it. The reason you want to do this is what's inside of here beyond the oyster is called the oyster liquor. Uh, and it's the juice that's with it. It's a little bit briny, um, but adds flavor to it. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll shuck these out. I'll eat some of these and then I'm going to take the liquor from some of these other ones and actually save it to make a sauce for when we grill them. So one of the first things you got to do, be very, very careful. First of all, um, we use oyster shuckers, which look a little like a knife blade, but they're dull on the sides and the tip is very sharp because we have to get it in there and pop the, uh, the shell apart. Do not try to use a pocket knife. Um, some people will use a, um, a chain mail glove if they're doing it by hand so that the knife won't go through the glove. Uh, I can tell you a story uh, of a gentleman who was shucking oysters by hand with a pocket knife, stabbed through his uh, thumb part cut a tendon. The doctor said the only thing he would ever be able to do was hitchhike with that thumb. So they had to go in and do a surgery and repair it. So be very careful when you are shucking oysters. So what we did is we just took a simple dish towel. We folded it over from this side, have my thumb goes under and it's going to press right on top of it. Okay. And what I'm going to do this, if it were to go through, would hit the cloth first and not go into my hand. Okay. I'm using the pressure of my left hand kind of hold down the oyster and what you're doing this back section is called the hinge this is where the um, not the part that would open the part that actually would stay closed on the oyster and what oysters do just for those of you that don't know um, oysters will open up their lips or their shell and they breathe in and out water and they get nutrients from other things within the water um, so it's um, it is a living creature that breathes in and out of there. So the way to get into it, though, is through the hinge. So I'm going to shove the shucking knife in to the back of this hinge, and I'm just trying to get it to an opening. You don't want to stab it all the way in. You just want to get the opening. And once I get in there, all I'm going to do is twist my wrist, and I felt it pop right there. So now what I do is I take, I clean off the knife just with this towel. And what I'm going to do is run this knife along the top side of this oyster shell. And I like to go down both sides because I'm never quite sure exactly where the oysters, what happens on the inside is the oyster actually holds on the top and the bottom. So you have to cut that loose. So there we have the oyster. Now I have to take my knife and I've got to cut across the bottom to get it away from what I would call the foot. And now this is ready to eat. Delicious. Um, that's shucking an oyster, eating it raw. So what I'm going to do now is actually I'll shuck another one and eat it raw as well. Now when we clean these, not only did we use just water, we also used a brush and had to scrub them. And where you want to scrub at is along what we would call the lips and then also the hinge part um, so that, because that's where the dirt and everything comes in and out and you really want to have that clean. So I've popped this, again, I'm going to wipe off my knife so I don't get any of the dirt and stuff into the oyster. Take my shucking knife, sorry. Run it along the top.
Oh, didn't quite get it all off there. And then disconnect it from the bottom. And there it is. So I've got to shuck several more, then we'll come back and we're going to grill them. We're also going to do oysters, uh, Kirkpatrick, which I think is a dish that we'll all like. We'll be right back with more of EC3 Really Cooks. Morning, folks. Welcome back to EC3 and EC3 Really Cooks. I'm Roger Ramsey. I'm the executive chef instructor of the Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center, EC3. And uh, the culinary pathway, Mr. Bobby's wandering about chucking some oysters because today is shellfish day. Uh, we're going to do a couple different dishes for you. I'm going to start out making a, a seafood stew called Chipino. Sounds Italian. It's actually from San Francisco. Uh, we're going to do some seared scallops to succotash, which was one of the dishes my Pro Star kids did at their national tournament this past summer. We're going to do some shrimp and garlic butter. Uh, Mr. Bobby's going to give us about two or three different oysters, and I'm going to do some oysters for you. But I want to get started on this chimpino because it's going to take a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. In our pan, we have about three quarters of a cup of butter that we've melted down. To that, we're going to add a couple of diced onions. Give it a little stir. Mr. Bobby, would you have me salt and pepper, please, sir? I forgot to grab it. Turn that heat down a little bit. Uh, along with the onions, we're going to add about half a cup of chopped parsley. We're going to give that just a couple of minutes for the onions to start softening, and then we're going to add some garlic in. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you don't want to add your garlic right away because, well, quite frankly, it will burn. And scorched garlic is not good eats. Let's go ahead and get her in. Now that's two big, big old cloves of garlic just sliced up. As soon as you can smell that garlic, you can go ahead and add the rest of your herbs, which consists of thyme, basil, and a couple of bay leaves. Now, word of caution on bay leaves. They're wonderful aromatics. They're not good eats. So keep track of how many you put in there, and before you serve it, make sure to take them back out. Nobody wants to bite down on that. I'm just saying. All right, next we're gonna add this up in there. A 28 ounce can of tomatoes. These are diced tomatoes. Use whole ones if you wish, just break them up with your hands as they go in. Tomatoes take a lot of salt and pepper, let's add a little more for them. Remember seasoning layers, and pretty much every time you put new food into your pan, give it a little love, give it a little salt and pepper. Check in the fire. Now what we have here is a cup and a half of chicken stock and about half a cup of water. We're going to put it in and all this is going to stew down for about 30 minutes or so before we start adding shellfish to it. The fish that's going in this dish, we've got some scallops, some shrimp, I think those are about 21, 25 count. Uh, some mussels, yes, they're frozen mussels. We're in central Kentucky, you really, it's hard to find much else. And we've got a little bit of fish. Uh, that happens to be perch. I like perch, and it was on sale, so, you know, let's be thrifty. Uh, so, I'm going to get this on the real heat, save our gas. Uh, Mr. Bobby will be up talking about some oysters here in just a minute. Let this stew down, and then we'll come back together and put up the rest of our stew together. Welcome back to EC3 Really Cooks. It is shellfish day and um, we showed shucking oysters earlier, cleaning oysters, eating them raw, which I love to do. Um, now I'm going to show you a grilled recipe. Uh, we're going to use our charcoal grill. Um, this is my own recipe. This is not something I took from somebody else. There's a couple of oyster houses down along the Gulf Coast that I've gone to that I've really enjoyed. Um, and came back and started playing with different ingredients and kind of came up with this one uh, that I'm going to show today. So we took the oysters, we shucked them. I saved the 
oyster liquor, put it into a, uh, ran it through a couple of sieves, and then used it into the, the sauce that I'm going to put on top of these. Into that sauce, I also put uh, one stick of butter, about four cloves of garlic, some fresh parsley, fresh thyme, uh, dried oregano. And one of the things that we are starting to do more here at EC3 is using local ingredients. Um, the garlic that was used today, good friends of mine, Pat and Holly Chitwood, gave me some of that. Um, the parsley and the thyme actually came from my front porch. My wife does an herb garden every year for me. Um, and so there's a lot of local products that are within 15 miles of Elizabethtown that you can find a lot of good, um, just good ingredients, fresh ingredients, and uh, don't really have to go very far to get the fresh stuff. Also in here are some green onions, which I picked up at our farmer's market uh, last weekend. So I've melted this down, and I'll show it into this camera, sorry. And all we're going to do is then scoop it and put it on top of these six oysters that I have here. Now, I really, really like garlic. So there is garlic in basically all of the dishes that I cook. Um, I have trained my children to love garlic also. And to make this sauce, I did similar to what Chef Ramsey did just a little bit ago. Um, I put the butter in and the oyster liquor and then added in um, the garlic, let it go for about a minute. And then um, able to add the rest of my ingredients, which again, it was uh, parsley thyme, dried oregano, and some green onions. So I have it on here. I'm now gonna take it over to the grill. We're gonna grill these for about three or four minutes. And then um, I'm gonna add in some fresh Parmesan and mozzarella to the top of it. We're gonna stick it in the salamander, broil it up really quickly and bring it back and we'll have our finished dish. So we'll be right back here on Shellfish Day at EC3. Two, three. Okay, folks, we're going to put together a succotash. And succotash, it's a classic southern dish, and it's just a combination, generally, of lima beans and corn. Well, I don't care for either of those things by themselves. I just don't. But to put it together, it works out real well. First thing we need to do, because it is a southern dish, we're going to add just a little bit of bacon. That's about three strips of bacon diced up. And that's going to take just a minute. We do want it to crisp, and we want it to render out its fat. Perk to cutting it smaller is just that it cooks faster. Okay? So. When the bacon does, has done its thing, it's nice and crisp, it's rendered out its fat, we're going to pull the bacon out, hold it till the end, it'll finish up the dish. Uh, and then we're going to proceed on using that combination, that little bit of olive oil and the bacon fat that we get out. So this was one of the dishes that uh, my students put together and took to Washington, D.C. for the Pro Start Nationals. Uh, actually, of the three dishes we presented, it was the one that was best received. You get graded in each of three categories. Your starter, which was our scallops and succotash. Your entree, which for us was a, I'm sorry, was a filet with, a, I'm sorry, not Ber Blanc sauce. It had a red wine reduction and a Bernays sauce. Uh, some, was supposed to have had some grilled asparagus and some cocoa potatoes. Well, let's just say it was supposed to have had. It's remarkable the last few seconds when you're presenting food to a judge that, uh, well, it, things get hectic and maybe some gets overlooked. So we've got our bacon cooked. We've pulled it out. We've got our bacon fat still in. This is Trinity vegetables, which is two parts onions and one part bell pepper, one part celery. Uh, in classic cuisine, you hear about the, the mirepoix, 
This is the same thing with a twist. So this is typical from down south, particularly Cajun and Creole type dishes. Um, and you know, most cuisines have some type of seasoning base they're gonna use. I said classic French, it's Mirepoix, uh, Haitian, Cajun, Creole, uh, it's gonna be the Trinity. Uh, and then for a lot of Latin countries, they use what's referred to as a Frito. Uh, so we've got our Trinity vegetables, they're cooked down a little bit. We'll get our lima beans in. They take a minute to cook. You know what we've not done? Put your salt and pepper in there. We've got to give it some love. And we've got a sprig of fresh thyme in there. I'm going to throw that whole stick in there. Here's the thing. you got to remember to take it back out, okay? It'll give it its love. But we've got to pull it back out because, I mean, we don't want to serve food with toothpicks built in. That's not good eats. We'll take just a swig of chicken stock. Make sure everything's loosened up on that pan. It'll help get those llama beans cooking through. Once it's reduced down to a class, then we're gonna add our corn in. Let's go ahead and get our corn in. Give it a little mix, give it a little love. Then we're gonna give it a little richness. And that richness is gonna come like the bacon fat wasn't enough. About half a cup of heavy cream. Now, if you want to give this dish a little color, it's green and yellow, it's kind of pretty. Uh, add a little red to it, some bell pepper, maybe tomato concasse, something like that. Just make it a little more interesting. But it's going to take just a few minutes. We have to reduce down that cream. Uh, we'll finish it with the bacon and plate it. And before it, as soon as it gets plated, it's going to get topped with some seared scallops, which will be our next endeavor. So let me change this out. I'll be right back. We'll cook some scallops. Welcome back to EC3 Really Cooks. These are grilled oysters. We finally finished them up. Um, again, we shucked the oysters. We took the liquor from those, added it to butter, added some garlic, parsley, thyme, dried oregano, uh, some green onions, and then grilled them for about four or five minutes on the grill. Basically what happens is the butter starts to boil and that is what ultimately cooks uh, the oyster. Once they were all almost all evaporated, uh, all that butter sauce was. We then took and put on some uh, Parmesan and mozzarella cheese, put it into the broiler, browned it across the top, and here is the finished product. Again, we'll have this recipe down below if this is something you, that you wanna try. We'll be right back with more of Shellfish Day here at EC3 Really Cooks. Okay, Tash, so we're gonna put some seared scallops on top of that. And these are what scallops look like. It's another shellfish. Uh, if you ever see the little scallop these shells, it's what they come from. These are actually the abductor muscle from inside of it. So those, those scallops, they, they have like jet propulsion. They will open and squeeze water out, and that's what moves them through the water. What you need to do when you get your scallops, take a little look at them. If you see something like that on the side, go ahead and remove it. It's called a foot, connects it to the shell, uh, it's just not the same quality of meat as the rest of it. Scallops are particularly sweet. Uh, they're tender. They have to be cooked really hot, really fast. And basically, about all they need is a little bit of salt and pepper and to be cooked. So, we, this pan's getting hot. It's going to be screaming hot when we get started. You need an oil that will take an amount of heat. Uh, clarified butter would work well. Avocado oil. We're using canola oil. You don't want to use whole butter, it'll burn. You don't want to use olive oil, it'll smoke. So we're just going to get a hot pan, a little bit of oil. Now, each one of these is going to go down as best we can and leave it absolutely still. 
and it's going to take about a minute. So by the time I get all of them in, I'll probably be turning them over. Scallops are much like shrimp in that they are sold with a count. So I think these are 10 to 15, 10 to 13, something like that. What that number means, it's normally a, a general rule, not an absolute, how many pieces of that food it takes to make a pound. So the smaller that number is, the bigger the product is. Uh, I believe these are 10 13s. Uh, when you get to 10 and 8s or under 8s, you're getting a pretty big piece of fish. They're all face down. Give them a little love. Then turn them over. And that's kind of what you want to see right there. Golden brown and delicious, my friends. That is not quite ready. Now, if you go mussing about with them too much, they won't brown up like that one. So. If you stand back and kind of look at that bottom edge, you can see the crust, that brownness, that mild reaction taking place. They go and get them turned over. A perfect scallop, and I'm not saying I'm cooking them perfect, I, ideally, the perfect scallop is going to be, have that brown appearance on the outside, uh, be just nearly raw on the inside. That one's nowhere near perfect. So, they are pretty much done. We want to add just a little extra hint of flavor. Now we're going to come in, I shut the heat off. We're going to come in, add a little butter, and just swirl them. Let them take out a little bit of that butter flavor. Don't want to leave them in that oil too long. They will overcook. They're still good, mostly. But best, best is when they're browned on the outside and just nearly raw on the inside. Oh, some scallops. So. Well, is it hypnotizing? Swirl, swirl. I'm gonna get these out of the oil. I'll be back. We're gonna cook us some shrimp and garlic butter. Give me just a minute. Folks, continuing on our shellfish expedition, uh, we're gonna do a little shrimp, and I'm sorry, uh, shrimp and garlic butter. We're gonna start out just a touch of canola oil. And a couple of tablespoons of butter. Now, that oil will increase the smoke point of the butter, and the butter will flavor the oil. Pretty handy. What we have here is about a pound of 21 count shrimp. And again, that count means how many fall, generally, in a pound, if they're that size. These are 21 to 25 counts. Now these are small shrimp, all things considered, so it's only gonna take a minute or two to get them cooked through. Matter of fact, let's get them turned. Whoosh! That's so fresh, he swam away. There's a rule when you're cooking shrimp. It's that C means cooked, and O means overcooked. So let's try to keep from O's. By we, I mean me, because well, y'all are watching. Never mind. Fire down quite a bit.
pull those out. Now these are going to get heated again. So the fact that they went into the vessel that held them when they were raw isn't going to affect us much. Again, they're, they're going to get heated again. So, our shrimp are cooked. We're going to add a little more butter. That's about four, four tablespoons or so. Okay, we want the butter to cool down quite a bit, and that fresh butter is going to help do that. A lot of garlic. Mr. Bobby, lots of garlic. He loves it. So as soon as you can smell the garlic again, squeeze you some lemon in there. These lemons have seeds, so squeeze it in between your fingers, catch the seeds, let the juice run through. Easy peasy. Turn the heat off altogether now. And these were kind of small lemons. So I used one and a half because it called for a large lemon. Everything back in. Now, that's about as simple as it gets. What we'll do here shortly, we'll serve this up on a little slice of baguette, and it's going to be wonderful. So, I think we've got one more dish to do, and uh, we'll jump on in here in just a minute. Welcome back to Shellfish Day here at EC3. Um, we're getting ready to do our oysters Kirkpatrick. It is a very, very simple recipe. There's not a lot to it. Um, we shucked the oysters from earlier today. We have them sitting in this pan, and then we're gonna make a topping for it. Um, what we're going to do is take equal parts ketchup and Worcestershire sauce. Add in about four or five squirts of Tabasco. We mix it together and then we're just going to put that on there. In the meantime, we're also going to end up adding in some bacon. We're going to add that onto the top of it. So we'll get that started here. Now all you want the bacon to do is really let go of the, the water and the fat and then it's just gonna crisp up and we're gonna put it in the oven at about 400 degrees and what's gonna happen with that is it'll finish cooking in there. So while that's going, what we'll do is again, we're just gonna spoon, it's equal parts ketchup and Worcestershire and then a few dashes of Tabasco sauce. We have put it into, obviously, a muffin pan. Um, the reason for that is it's gonna keep them level, um, and that's kind of one of the things that you wanna do when you're cooking it, because you do wanna keep the liquor that is in there. Um, so while we're waiting on this bacon, and it only needs a few more minutes. Again, you want it to just start getting brown. I said I was going to keep it here. All right. We're done with this for now. Now what I want to do is just spoon this over top of oysters. Again, they're not totally finished and I did just burn my hand. Um, not the first time today even. I just love bacon also along with garlic, so I'll try 
try to put as much on these as I can. All right. I'm just going to stick this in the oven at 400 degrees for about five to 10 minutes. You'll start to see everything kind of boil on top and then the bacon will actually crisp up. In the meantime, um, I'm going to make a quick horse uh, cocktail sauce. Now, there's a lot of different recipes out there that add a lot of different stuff. The one that I make at home, um, there's just four ingredients. So there's some prepared, actually five ingredients, sorry, prepared horseradish, which I just need, it's probably a little over a tablespoon. I have some very finely minced garlic, about a clove of that. Ketchup. I don't know how much I put in there. Three tablespoons, maybe. Put in some Worcestershire sauce. That's about a tablespoon. And then three good splashes of Tabasco. And the great thing about this is, if you learn how to make this on your own, is you'll learn what you like to taste, and you can add or subtract things from it. Now, I don't add salt and pepper into it. I think the horseradish uh, actually delivers both of those. Um, it is, again, if you don't like garlic as much, don't add the garlic in there. Um, but a basic one, horseradish, ketchup, Worcestershire, that kind of does it. I add the uh, garlic because I like it. I add the Tabasco because I like a little bit of heat on it. And if you can let this sit up in a refrigerator for about three hours, this is a finished product that is really, really good. Um, you also can eat it right away, and it's pretty good as that, too. So we'll be right back with our uh, finished product of our Oysters Kirkpatrick here on Shellfish Day at EC3. Okay, our Chimpino base has, has made, and it's all come together nice and lovely, reduced a little bit. While you weren't looking, just before I brought it to a boil, back to a boil, I added a couple cans of clams. We're in Kentucky, you can't find fresh clams, and I wanted clams, so I had to get a can. So now all you do is add your seafood in, and reverse order what it's going to take to cook. So the longest it's going to take will be this fish. We'll put it in. It'll take probably four or five minutes to cook through. Easy peasy. So, fish goes in. Everything submerged. Switch sides. Now we've got our scallops. They're probably going to take about three minutes. Let's go get them in. Get all those merged. That's hot. One sec. Next, let's go ahead and get our shrimp in. You notice I laid everything out on paper towels? That's just to pull up with some of the excess moisture. No big deal. The dough's mixed in. And the mussels have already been cooked, so they're just going to get heated through. We'll let this ride about three, four minutes to put the mussels in, give it another minute or two, and we'll call it done. So I'm going to let you all get on with today. We'll be just a minute finishing this up. We'll plate up. We'll take a look at everything Mr. Bobby and I got together for y'all. Well, folks, there you are. That's EC3's version of the shell game, I guess. We've got Mr. Bobby's oyster three ways on the half shell, Kirkpatrick, which is big down in Australia, I've learned. And roast with a little Parmesan cheese and some butter, all oh, looks good. We've got our scallops and succotash fish with a bacon. We've got our garlic butter shrimp on a little baguette. And we've got our San Francisco seafood stew known as Chiapino with a little grilled toast. So we appreciate y'all coming to visit, hanging out with us for a little while. We'll be back soon. Uh, remember us if you have any catering needs. Uh, all our contact information will be attached to the programs. And 
We appreciate your time. Take care now.